Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today's guest is Sepiza Sarimi, and she is the founder over at Run, Walk, Talk. Sepiza, welcome to the show. Hi, Adam. Thanks for having me. All right, Sepia, I'm excited about today's topic. So really talking about psychology for entrepreneurs, a lot of entrepreneurs, business owners, and executives that listen to this show. So excited to get into that and also the, the run, walk, talk journey. Before we do that, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with what we like to call our Mission Matters Minute. So Sepida, our mission over at Mission Matters is really to amplify stories and to get them out there for entrepreneurs and business owners that we feel need to be heard. So that's our mission. Sepida, what mission matters to you? I have a lot of missions that matter to me, but the the one that I'm talking about today is mental health. And Mm -hmm. I really want to make mental health as practical as possible, to take it out of the conceptual and the theoretical and bring it into real life. And the way that I do that is with entrepreneurs. And I also work with therapists, training them in how to do that. Mm, It's great. Great having, I love bringing mission-based individuals on the line to share why they do what they do, how they're doing it, and really what we can all learn from that. So great having you on. And I guess let's get us kicked off here. Like, when did you get interested in, in like helping people specifically with mental health? Like, how'd that come about? I actually pushed it away for a long time, Adam. I grew up in a family where my dad was a therapist and an entrepreneur, and he was actually pretty troubled. So I had pretty negative associations with with therapy and therapists. And it wasn't until I did some of my own therapy that I started to see the value in it when I was in my early 20s and had a family crisis and everything is fine now. But and I had a sister who was really sick and I had some fallout from that that I had to deal with myself, just mentally, emotionally. And that's where I found a lot of value in therapy. And I actually became a runner at that same time as well. So it's part of what the genesis of Run, Walk, Talk was. And I think, you know, coming from a family where I had a dad who was a therapist and an entrepreneur and was really troubled, I have a heart for those people. So Mm. uh, I really like working, working with entrepreneurs. I really care about them. It's, you know, my dad now is, is older. He has dementia. He's not well. So kind of watching his trajectory, which, you know, he was a brilliant man. And because of his own mental health issues, wasn't able to fully create the vision that he had for his life. So I would like people to have the tools that they need to heal from things that have happened to them so that they can, so that they can fulfill their own missions. Mm. So I know a lot of, you know, as entrepreneurs, myself and many others that are listening to this, you know, we get ideas, right? (laughs) Where we come up with ideas, we think of things. I probably thought of 10 YouTube channels yesterday that I won't start. It's okay. (laughs) Right. That being said, how did you know that run, walk, talk and just this project? Like, how did you know that this was going to be an important part of your life and something that you were going to like an idea that you were going to pursue? I think really where it started was with this combination of finding therapy useful mm-hmm. for myself and then and then discovering running for myself in my early mid twenties. It was just one of those things that the universe kind of lined it up for me and mm-hmm. it just happened that I got serious about both those things at the same time and thought, Man, I feel so great when I see my therapist and I feel so mm-hmm. great when I go running. Maybe I should combine these. Like I wish somebody would do this. <laughs> and I actually wasn't even a th- I wasn't even a therapist at that point. I, yeah. it was right around the time that I was applying to grad school. And when I got to grad school, I realized there's all of this evidence for movement and exercise. And therapy is all about evidence-based practice these days. Like we Mm -hmm. really try to do things that science supports, but I wasn't seeing it in practice anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I decided then like somebody should really do this because there are a lot of people, like it took me years to come to therapy. Like I really needed it. And I was avoiding it because the thought of sitting in a room with a stranger talking about my feelings was just made my skin crawl, right? But if somebody had said, hey, there's an option where you can go for a walk and you, and you can be on the beach and it's much more low key and you're side by side with your therapist, I might have gone sooner. So for me, it, it just made a lot of sense. Yeah. I like that we're tying entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs to this concept of psychology and therapy and otherwise, because I feel like 
I feel that conversation needs to be had more. The, you know, after the, you know, COVID, the pandemic, all of that, I feel like our society kind of moved forward a bit in terms of being able to have these conversations. Before that, I would say it was much more like taboo or this or that. I don't know if that's the right word, but, you know, kind of just suck it up, you know, move forward. This is just part of the way entrepreneurship works. There's ups and downs and we couldn't, I feel like, have that dialogue as healthy or maybe we could have, but we chose not to as a collective, I would argue, for many entrepreneur, you know, segments, I'll say. But that being said, being able to have that open dialogue now and for people to acknowledge that they're human, I mean, that piece of it is, it's kind of refreshing for me. It's different. It's awesome. And it's so yeah. exciting for me. And I think you're right. I think the pandemic did, because it was a collective experience, it really freed us of that taboo and that stigma of being able to say, I'm not okay. Mm. And everybody was not okay, right? It was not, it was not an okay time. Of course. And so we, we got a little bit of practice talking about, <laughs> you know, what it's like not to be okay and realize, yeah. hey, I feel a little bit better when I'm able to say this out loud and not feel shame <laughs> about it. And <laughs> Which sounds obvious like now, story. but for, you know, everybody that didn't have that opportunity prior, that's why I laugh. It's refreshing. Yeah. And you know what, you know, Adam, I, I think you'll re relate to this. Your listeners will, will understand this, but entrepreneurs are in a tricky spot because they have their customers or their clients and their employees and their investors. Who do they talk to if they're not okay? Right. Mm -hmm. Those are not necessarily audiences that are that want to know that they're not doing well. Those are audiences yeah. that they're serving. And so it's really important for entrepreneurs to have each other. So if they have a co-founder, that's wonderful. And having a good relationship with a co-founder, it can really save your life and save your business. If they have a therapist, that's good. If they have a spouse or partner, but really having other entrepreneurs that they can talk to is super valuable. There's just not a lot of spaces for, for them, for us to do that freely. So that's yeah. kind of what I'm doing too. Yeah. And I grew up, I mean, my, my mother was a social worker for, I don't know, 50 years or whatever before she retired. So I grew up in that environment of definitely talking it out, right? Like whether I wanted to or not mm -hmm. since I was a kid, right? So we always yeah. had, you know, really healthy dialogues and I was an only child. So, I mean, you combine those two things and we had pretty healthy dialogues throughout my whole life. And so I was kind of shocked at how much people kind of sometimes held in. But I guess when it comes to entrepreneurs, what should they focus on in terms of whether it's their psychology or mental health to improve their business and their lives? Like, what are some things? So there are three things, and they all roll up to something that I call self-management. And the three things are self-awareness, self-care, and self-regulation. And self-awareness is this idea that you know who you are. And you know where you come from, how the way that you grew up affected you, how you're continuing to act out things that may be helpful to you or may not be helpful to you, and how all of that shows up in your business. That's self-awareness. The second piece is self-care, which is having systems in place that support your self as a human. So sleeping properly, eating properly, all of the stuff that we know, all of the sort of, I call it like, like the Huberman lab stuff like knowing kind of physiologically what your body needs and getting that to yourself. And then the third piece is self-regulation, which is having strategies for in the moment upset. So it's very normal and natural for us through the course of our lives to have moments where we don't feel good. What do we do in those moments when we don't feel good? So mm -hmm. those are the three pieces that I work with. Almost everybody in the world needs help with at least one piece of it. Mm -hmm. uh, most people need help, some help with all three a lot of us didn't get those tools growing up. They don't yeah. teach them in school. If you grew up in a family, like you're so lucky. I'm a social worker too. That's my background. So you're, mm. you're very lucky to have a social worker mother. So I'm sure that you learned you don't a lot of that growing up though. Hold on. You don't know that growing up when you're young, you're like, oh, we got to talk about this. Like, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Just punish me, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you're a kid, yeah. just punish me like yes, my friends. They just of have course. to go to their room and not. I want to talk about it. It's painful. <laughs> but now you've got all these sort of, and now you've got a podcast, Adam. That's not an accident. You know, oh, my in a, in a family God. we're talking about. That's a big yeah. joke. Come on, Zabita. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've become your mother, Adam. Um, I, I know. I'm aware. So, I show that all the time. I was like, man, we should have been recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm crying so, over here. Thank so, you. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, that's perfect. That's my job. You know, those tools are really important and you're learning them all the time, right? You're kind of uncovering them all the time. So it's not a thing where 
you know, clients that, I, that come to me, sometimes they're very sort of, I think you know the type, but they're very sort of like engineer type. They're like, okay, mm-hmm. what are the things that I do to be a healthy human being? You know, yeah. I'm like, well, okay, well, I can give you, I can give you a checklist, but it's a checklist that you're going to have to reset every single day of your life for the rest of your life. And they don't quite understand that, right? Or they get really rigid, right? So they'll, they'll have self-care routines that all right, you know, it's like I go to the gym for 45 minutes every morning and I do exactly this routine and there will be no change, right? Or that, you know, they get really kind of rigid about it and that's not really the way either. So there's a lot of nuance in this stuff in the self-management, but it's mm. very, very important. That's really what I, what I preach and what I'm practicing and what I'm teaching my clients. And we mm. all fail at that over and over again and need to kind of get back on the horse. So, hmm. and only so much you can do on, you know, a 20 minute podcast or so, but like, what are some things that, you know, people can do that are entrepreneurs or otherwise that are high impact in terms of kind of just leveling themselves up a bit? So something that they can kind of take away from this podcast, like if they don't go to a therapist or they don't want to go to a therapist mm-hmm. for self-awareness, be curious about your strong reactions. So strong reactions are really helpful, important clues, and they usually point to something historical. A lot of entrepreneurs will over-index on being rational, like they value being rational, but everyone is actually irrational sometimes and often actually. So be curious about why. Instead of pushing away strong reactions, when you have them, be curious about where they come from, what they remind you of. They can help you become more self-aware and they can give you clues about ways that you're operating that you might not be aware of. And that Mm -hmm. can really save you. Then you're less likely to kind of repeat patterns that, you know, happened when you were younger. And then now you're acting them out in your company. And I see this constantly, all the time, all day long. When it comes to self-care, I mentioned this a little earlier, but have systems, but be flexible. Make sure that your systems are responsive. You're a human being. You know, people get very obsessive about things like morning routines. What is Mm. the perfect morning routine? And I think, well, what morning is it? What happened the night before? <laughs> yeah. You know, what's happening that day? So so don't think that you can like turn yourself into a robot and everything's gonna be okay. Be again, be curious about what's going on and what you actually need, right? And mm. and self-care may look different over the course of your lifespan. It may look different over the course of your business, over the course of the year, for women often over the course of the month, right? So mm-hmm. be curious and, and be flexible. And then the mm. third piece is self-regulation. And this is the one where for my clients who are kind of more checklist oriented, they, you know, some of them really like this piece because I say, okay, you're going to learn this breathing exercise and you're going to practice it three times a day, right? Mm. You know, those are the ones where it's really helpful to be doing some Googling and YouTubing about like, what are ways to calm down my nervous system and calm down my body. And then what you're doing in the self-regulation is you're increasing your capacity to pause. So you know, we all have kind of stimuli that come at us and maybe trigger us or upset us or make us whatever, like put us in a state that's not calm or maybe make us numb out, right? So mm. when you're in that moment, can you catch it? Can you notice it? And then do you have tools to be able to manage it? And so breathing is an excellent one. And sometimes it's not about becoming calm. Sometimes you're in that numbed out state and you need to elevate yourself up out of that. And you can certainly use breathing for that, but going outside for a walk can be really effective or going Mm. for a run, having a bout of exercise can help you get your brain in a state where then you can operate and function again. Having those tools is very, very helpful. Sometimes people just skip to that piece, but if you don't have the self-care, you're going to need to use tools all day long. You'll be exhausted. And if you don't have the self-awareness, you won't know what's going on with you and what you need. These are all great. And I'm taking notes and I feel like people need to re-listen to this one. And uh, you're probably driving in your car right now and you're like, you know, oh man, this is good stuff. It is good stuff. So you want to listen to this one again and, and get some of those notes down that Sepida has given us here because it's super helpful. Sepida, I want to spend some of the time we have left here talking about run, walk, talk specifically. So maybe tell us more about the, you know, the organization and how people can get involved. I would love to. So Run, Walk, Talk started as my private practice. And in the last year, we have pivoted it from private practice to a training program for therapists and wellness professionals who are interested in incorporating movement into their work. So it's really a method of psychotherapy and coaching that combines the traditional talk-based approaches with mindful movement, usually in nature, 
to support mental health and personal growth. And it, it works on three levels, the level of like the method, the framework of how you actually work with the client, and then modulator, which is some of that self-regulation piece that, that I talked about, and then metaphor, right? Because what you're doing in a run, walk, talk session is that you are moving your body and being aware of your body and really telling a new story with your body that then can extend into the rest of your life and into your business too. Because I do work with a lot of entrepreneurs in, in this way. We are really on a mission to make running and walking therapy as widespread and well-known as traditional therapy approaches that are indoor and seated. Like I would love for people to come into therapy and have running and walking therapy be a default and for the conversation to be, does it make sense for us to stay inside today, right? Rather than does it mm. make sense for us to go outside? I really want to make it totally, totally ubiquitous because it really works and it helps people. And so at this phase, we've trained 20 therapists in 2023, therapists and coaches. That's um, amazing. Congratulations. Well. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. So they're certified level one. Yeah. Wow. Practitioners. I'm super proud of them. It's very community oriented because a lot of what happens in therapy training or coaching training is you'll go for a weekend somewhere and then you'll get mm -hmm. some knowledge and then you like let you out into the wild and who knows what happens. <laughs> so, so for us, it's not that way. It's, so we're going to do another cohort in September. Um, mm. People can go to runwalktalk.com to sign up for our newsletter and, and the Instagram is runwalktalk so they can follow along there as well. But we're going to do another cohort in September. That cohort is going to be 12 weeks of once a week instruction and homework for, for the practitioner and then a full year in 2025 of monthly meetings. So we all meet as a group every month. We talk about cases. We talk about what's coming up in terms of like people having trouble getting Run Walk Talk launched in their own practices. So it's a really supportive, like loving community. We all boost each other. I have a lot of experience in my past life around press and editorial. So I support them in things like talking to reporters or pitching. So it's a really like loving, supportive community. And that's what I'm trying to create. And eventually I would love to have like tens of thousands of people doing Red Walk Talk. That's mm. really, that's really what I want is it's going to take a while. It's going to take a long mm. time, but we've got a wonderful start. It's very exciting. Love it. It's amazing. If people want to learn more, um, is there a website or they connect with you or like, tell, tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. The Red Walk Talk website is runwalktalk.com mm -hmm. and we're on Instagram at runwalktalk. And then there's also, I just, created therapyforentrepreneurs.com, which is for people mm. who want to work with me personally. And then that's, that Instagram is like little baby Instagram. There's not a lot on there, but it's therapy for entrepreneurs is the mm. Instagram. So hope to see some people on there. Would love to. Amazing. And then for the audience, just so you know, we'll put the links in the show notes so that you could just click on them and head right on over. And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and having them share their mission, the reason behind it, you know, why they do what they do and what we can all learn from that so that we can all grow together. So if this is your first time with us again and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, do it. Hit the subscribe button. We have a lot of amazing guests coming up and we don't want you to miss a thing. And if you're long term, listener and you haven't left us a review yet come on pitch in with that review we really do appreciate that sapita it has been an absolute joy talking to you today i'm gonna have to let my mom listen to this one so she can crack up too so thank you <laughs> thank you so much it was so fun talking to you i really appreciate it